What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Recently I posted a video on how to build a $350 gaming PC. That was part one, the build. This is part two, the test. So if you haven't watched part one, I will leave a link in the description, but I'm gonna give you a quick refresh on the specs here. Total cost on this build was $347. For the CPU, I'm using a Ryzen 3 2200G, eight gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, Gigabyte Micro ATX B450 motherboard, Thermaltake H17 case, Thermaltake 500 watt power supply, and a Kingston 240 gigabyte SSD. I'm going to leave links in the description for all the parts used in this build. I also have a part 3 coming up where we add a dedicated GPU, and speaking of that, at the end of this video, I kind of need your help. I need to get your opinion on what GPU to use. I got a few choices here, but that'll be up at the end of the video. So with all that out of the way, let's get into testing. All right, so here it is. We have the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. Stock clocks, 3.5 gigahertz. It will turbo up to 3.7. Eight gigabytes of DDR4, 3000 megahertz RAM. And the built-in Vega 8 GPU. Now I did go into the BIOS and dedicate an extra gigabyte of RAM here. So we have two gigabytes of VRAM, but that's the only thing I changed. So I know this was a lower end gaming PC build, but on my gaming PC, I still do everyday tasks like surf the web, watch YouTube videos and everything like that. So I'm just going to test a 4K YouTube video here. Everything's been super smooth with this PC so far. We have zero drop frames here on this 4K YouTube video. And if you want to install Kodi to view your 1080p and 4K movies, this setup's going to work fine for that also. So now I want to get into a few of my favorite benchmark applications. I've been doing a lot of PC builds lately, so I'm going to have some results from those other builds ranging from the 2400G to the Ryzen 2600 and even an i3-8100. First up, we have Geekbench. This is strictly CPU performance here. As you can see at the top, we have the Ryzen 2200G, single core, 3756, multi-core, 10,043. Moving down the list a little bit, we start getting better scores, but those are more expensive CPUs. And if we take a look at the Ryzen 2400G versus the 22, if we overclock this 22, we could match or even exceed those numbers there. But there's no way we're going to get anywhere near the 2600. With a multi-core of 20,468 and a single core of 4,363. This is a much more powerful CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. I recently did a $850 build on a Ryzen 2600 and an RTX 2060. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. Here we have Cinebench R15. Now having extra threads like the 2400G or the 2600 is going to help out tremendously with this benchmark here. But the 2200G scored a 566, 2400 was 798, 2600 was 1274, and the i3-8100 was a bit above the 2200G with 568. And finally, for the CPU test, I ran a Blender BMW render test. 2200G, 3 minutes, 29 seconds. 2400, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. 2600, 1 minute, 35. And the i3-8100 came in at 3 minutes and 10 seconds. And again, with this test, having extra cores and threads really helps out. As you can see, the 2400G was about a minute faster than the 2200. And that's mainly because it has 4 extra threads. So when rendering, it'll render 8 blocks at a time instead of 4 like the 2200G does. Now it's time to get into some gameplay. As you can see up in the top left hand corner, I do have Afterburner running for a majority of these games. I did have an issue with one of them at the end. The name of the game, resolution, and settings will also be listed on screen so you know exactly what's going on at any given time. I personally don't play Dota, so I'm not sure if this was a good test or not. I did try a benchmark, but I couldn't get it running correctly, so I just jumped into game real quick. There is a lot of stuff going on, but I've seen tournaments where there's much more. So there is a chance you could get a lower frame rate that I'm getting here in a bigger battle, but we're also at medium settings and 1080p. So all you would have to do is drop a couple of the settings down to low and you'll be good to go. Another thing I'd like to mention here is I do not have VSync on for any of these tests you're about to see, so you will see screen tearing in some of these games. I recommend turning VSync on and that will eliminate 99% of it. I'm going to stop talking now. Everything you need to know is on screen. I will be back for the very last game because I had a few issues.
So like I mentioned earlier, I did have an issue with Afterburner, and that was specifically with Apex Legends. I guess the new update killed the overlay feature, but Fraps was working, so I can't get the minimum average and things like that. But overall, I was actually really surprised at how smooth it did run. Even though we're at 720p low, I was expecting a much lower frame rate than this. I also ran into another issue, now I believe it has to do with the update that I'm using now on the game, but it crashed on me so I couldn't even get into battle here. It's definitely not due to the chip because I have tested this in the past on the 2200G and the 2400G successfully, I've played through a few games on each of those CPUs. So it's just got something to do with the update that's going on right now. I tested a couple of other games, but I forgot to turn on my game capture and I really didn't want to go back to do it. So here's the benchmark results for Resident Evil 2, the remake, 1080p, low settings, 
and 720p low settings. And just because I know I'm going to be asked about it, here's Fortnite 1080p medium settings. It's okay, but I recommend going down to 720p medium settings, or you could do 1080 low. So overall, in my opinion, this is an awesome budget starter PC. There's tons of upgradability here. Since we're using that B450 motherboard, you could always upgrade to the 2600 or even a 2700. If you follow the initial build to a T, you have a big enough power supply to add a nice dedicated GPU down the road. And we could do that with the 2200G. This CPU will perform awesomely with the right GPU for 1080p, 60fps or above gaming. And speaking of a dedicated video card, I do have part three on the way, but I need your opinion. What card should I put in here? I have three choices here. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people who want me to do a 580, but unfortunately, I don't have one in my possession, and I seriously don't feel like buying one. Now, these are the three cards that I have for this build. I have 2080s, 2070s, 2060s, a 2080 Ti that I could throw in here, but I want to keep it as budget-friendly as possible. So this is what I'm asking you guys. Let me know in the comments below which one of these cards I should use for this build. I know I could go through and do all three of these cards and benchmark them. And to tell you the truth, all three of these cards are going to perform fine at 1080p. I just kind of want to get your opinion on what you want to see in here first. I have an ASRock RX 598 GB. This is the Phantom Gaming Edition. The ASUS GTX 1660, this is the non-TI variant with 6GB of GDDR5. I've yet to even test this card, I've actually had it for a few days as of making this video, I just really haven't had the time to do it because I've been busy with this build. And finally, an older Gigabyte GTX 1060 6GB variant. Now remember, we're starting out with this PC that costs 350 US dollars to build. The ASRock RX 590 is $220 on Newegg as of making this video. The GTX 1660 is $225, and you can get a used 1066GB for around $160 on eBay. But in the end, it's really going to come down to what you guys want to see in this rig. I'll eventually do a benchmark with all three of them, but I do want to do a dedicated video with one of these GPUs in this new PC. So let me know which GPU you want to see running in this rig in the comments below. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Keep an eye on the channel for part three. If you haven't watched part one, link is in the description. If you could, hit that like button. Maybe think about subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on things like this. And like always, thanks for watching.